eventually you got booked in the, the Memphis territory, but before that you, you got teamed up with George Goulas. Yeah. How, how did that come about? Well, he was Nick Goulas' son. And uh, I always got along with him, but the guy was, you know, I mean, he really couldn't, couldn't he wouldn't hurt my money, so I probably would get paid the same amount anyway. Right. But, but more or less, I didn't, I didn't want to see the guy get hurt, but I didn't want to see nobody hurt him. But I drug much just being by myself or with somebody else. So did Nick put you with the, with George because maybe you helped shine him up a little bit? You, you kind of, well. Or protected him maybe, I don't maybe know. Maybe protected him, maybe they came and gave us a push as a team. I didn't, but he was kind of strange in the way he wanted to get a push. So I don't know exactly. I, I mean, I'm not as smart either, either as far as how we, I became smarter than him. You know, right. then his dad, I mean, his dad didn't know, you know, his dad didn't even know that um, he was as, as smart as he was, you know. Yeah. So how long were you, how long were you guys a team? Me and George? Yeah. I mean, I think maybe about a year. Let me ask you a question when I'm thinking about it. I, and I've seen it myself. You know, if, if anybody needed a, a toothbrush or a screwdriver, or a towel, no. a padlock, maybe even a hub, hub cut. You, you always had it in your bag. Seemed like that. It Seemed did, like... it did. I heard stories about the Steiners would come over and ask you for a monkey wrench or something, or, <laughs> or, a, or a gorilla wrench, I don't know. They'd yeah. ask you for something, and lo and behold, you have them. it. Every yeah. day with them. Yeah. I just didn't want nobody using my towel. I mean, we'd grind my face off with, and then right. we'd grind the privates off with. But but why was it your responsibility to bring fifteen towels? Wouldn't, but they, they would probably ask me. Yeah, and, probably, and no, you wouldn't say no. All right. Yeah. Okay. I just want to get that out of the way. Yeah, I'm not too good. I say no to something like that. Y'all ain't wants to just drive stuff off, but you know what comes with just drive myself off. So uh, I got you. You yeah. know, really, I understand that. No problem. Let me ask you about your health these days, man. How are you feeling? Feeling, feeling real good. You know, um, uh, I got a pacemaker put in. Mm -hmm. And once you stop stop wrestling, little little bruises hurt you all the time. You know, little bit of things. I don't I don't miss that a bit. You know. Well, uh, how about uh, I had a, a little story too that I want to ask you about. It was about a year ago, or where we're filming this now. We're not, it's going to be about a year. We'll look at our fans out there too. Um, you were in the airport. People were concerned about you. Yeah. And uh, it was it was a deal about you being lost. Yeah. Can we can we, can we hear that story? What happened? I wasn't lost. I wasn't lost in the first place. Well, that yeah. was a story. I was yeah. Say. Yeah. Uh, just one of, just one of them deals, you know. I, I was on another flight out of the same one of the gates there, and it had been canceled a couple of times. Then they moved it to another one, another place, a different term, terminal. I, but I wasn't lost, you know. But my health part problem was, was uh, still, you know. But you lost your phone. Lost my phone was the main thing. Okay. That's the main thing. You couldn't call, couldn't call couldn't, anybody. Couldn't find nobody. Couldn't remember a number. No. No. Back in the old days, we used to have pay phones. You had to remember <laughs> or write a number on your phone, on your hand or that something. That was my thing about that, you know. 